When the original iPhone was released in 2007, one of the biggest things that set it apart from other phones was its incredible touchscreen. Every iOS app has to respond to some sort of user input or it's basically useless. And we've seen how we can respond to user input using things like buttons, switches, and sliders. But sometimes we want more custom behavior that can't be achieved using something like a simple button. For example, a piano app would need to detect multiple touches sliding over piano keys, and a drawing app would need to detect a user touch or multiple touches and draw those touches to the screen somehow. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to detect user touches in your iOS application and how to update your UI based on those touches using UIKit. In a UIKit app, every screen is represented by a UI view controller. And in a UI view controller, we can implement the following methods. There's touches began, touches moved, touches ended, and touches canceled, which come from UI Responder, which is a superclass of UI view controller. So that just means we have to call the superclasses implementation every time we override these methods. But basically, every time the user puts their finger on the screen, we can detect what that user is doing with these methods. So if I run this application, now, every time I start touching the screen, touches began will get called. If I move my mouse or my finger around the screen, touches move will get called. And if I let go, touches ended gets called. And there's also touches canceled, and that's gonna get called when something interrupts the touches. So that could be maybe getting a phone call, or if I hit the home button, touches canceled gets calls, or the lock button, or something else that cancels the touches. Uh, but for the most part, it's gonna be began, moved and ended. Now let's make these functions a little bit more interesting. So now when I touch down and I move around the screen, I can get the X and Y position of where my mouse or finger is on the screen. So in the top left, that should be zero, zero or close to zero, zero. And as I get to the bottom right, that's gonna be the width and height of the iPhone screen. Right now, I'm only touching the screen with one finger or just my mouse. So I know there's only gonna be one touch. So I'm just grabbing the first touch out of the set of touches and then getting the location within the current view on the phone. Now there's two properties that I'm most interested in when detecting touch on a view. A view must have is interaction enabled set to true in order to be able to detect touches. And if we wanna detect multi-touch, we're gonna to have to enable is multiple touches enabled. So by default, a UI view has this property set to true and this property set to false. So if we wanted to detect multiple touches on a single view, we would have to set this to true. And we can do this in the storyboard as well. So if I select the view and go over here, I can see that user interaction is enabled, but multiple touch is disabled. And something that can be a little bit annoying in the beginning is that not all views are the same with this. So if I select a UI image view and drag that over to the screen, a UI image view by default has user interaction disabled. So you might go to detect touches within a UI image view and realize that nothing's happening, think you have a bug in your code, but it's actually that you just don't have this enabled yet. So for this application, we're not gonna deal with multiple touches, just single touches. So I'm just gonna leave user interaction enabled and multiple touch disabled. And we can detect touches on any view in the view controller. So not just the view controller's main view, but if I drag in another view here, and I'll create a property for this view, and head back over to the view controller, delete these methods for now. By default, these methods will get called if I'm touching on the view controller's view or within any sub view of that view. But I can actually detect where my touches are within the coordinate system of this view. So I could do a quick check. So if the view that was touched is the green view, I'm gonna print out touch screen view, but I'm also gonna check the location of the touch 
within the green view's coordinate system, not the view controller's view coordinate system. And if it wasn't the green view, then it must have been the view controller's view. So now if I run this and I begin a touch over here, I'm gonna see it's just touches began and that's the X and Y position. But if I touch right here, I can see that it's actually touching in the green view and it's the coordinate system of the green view, which means that zero, zero is somewhere up here. So we can use these methods to detect touches in any of the views on the screen right now. Let's make this a little bit more interesting. And every time I do a touches moved event, I want this green square to actually move with my touch. So in my touches moved method, I could do something really simple. So I'm gonna set the green views uh, origin.x, so it's top left corner, x and y position here, to be wherever I touch within the screen. So if I start dragging from this top left corner, I'm now dragging this green square around. Uh, but if I start dragging from down here, it's gonna always put that top left corner wherever I'm dragging. So maybe I should only do this if the touch is on the green view. So now if I touch around here, nothing happens. But if I go to drag the green view, it still, it jumps into place because it's always tracking that top left corner. So just a little bit more logic should help this. So now this works no matter where I drag it from the green view. As long as I start my touches from this green square, I'm gonna be able to drag this around the screen. And the way this is working is initially when the touches begin, I check if we're in the green view, get the location of the touch within the green view's coordinate system and save that to a property called offset, which has a type of CG point. So if I touch way over here, this is a 200 by 200 square. If I touch right over here, it's gonna be close to 200 by 200. Then down in the touches moved, I get the location of the touch within the super views coordinate system, which is you know the, the view controller's view. And this is because we're gonna be moving the square somewhere within its super views coordinate system. Uh, then given those values, I'm gonna make the green views origin.x and origin.y, whatever value my, my touch event is in, whatever location my touch is in, but minus the original x and y locations of where I touch. So if I touch over here, it's gonna balance that out so that I can just drag this around the screen from wherever I want. This works really well, and we can use these touch methods to implement some really complex behavior. But as our complexity grows, our amount of code grows, and our amount of room for error also grows. So when it comes to implementing some of the more common touch gestures, there are actually some built-in objects that we can use to simplify the way we write our code. So we can use a thing called a UI gesture recognizer. And there are seven gesture recognizers that we can choose from. So if we wanted to implement some sort of pinch gesture so that we could resize a view, you know, like you resize an image, uh, we could use the UI pinch gesture recognizer, or we could rotate a view using the rotation gesture recognizer, or if we wanted to implement our square dragging around logic, we can use a UI pan gesture recognizer. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna re-implement the app we already have, but using a UI gesture recognizer instead of using those touch methods. So I've deleted all of the code, but left the green view in there. And now I'm gonna add that UI pan gesture recognizer. And when I create the UI pan gesture recognizer, I can give it a target and action, kind of similar to the way we create a UI control. And we get that weird objective C behavior in here. And then we add the gesture directly to the view that we wanna detect the gesture on. So I wanna detect a pan gesture that's moving around the screen only on the green view. So I add it directly to the UI view in this case. And now if I start dragging around this green square, I can see all of those log statements coming out. And if I drag around the white view, nothing will happen. Now let's enable that dragging behavior around the screen. So now I have the exact same behavior as before, but using that UI pan gesture recognizer. And if we take a look at the code, this is one of the more common ways of implementing this. Every time we implement a UI pan gesture recognizer, it's gonna keep track of 
how far we've panned our finger over a particular view. So in this case, it's tracking where we're putting our finger on the green view. And it's gonna keep track of that forever until we, yeah. Now it's gonna keep track of that until we lift our finger off of the view. So, yeah. Wait, so we can grab, so we can get how far it's moved using, yeah. Mm, let's see. Every UI pan gesture recognizer is gonna keep track of how far you've panned your finger on a particular view. So we can grab those values using the translation method on the gesture itself, and then we can update our views origin.x and origin.y by that xy difference from the gesture. But the gesture keeps track of the entire distance moved until you lift your finger off the screen. So if we wanna keep updating every time this function is called, which is many times during a single pan gesture, we need to then reset this back to zero each time, otherwise our view's just gonna fly off the screen. Uh, so this is only four lines of code within the function here, and this implements that exact same behavior that we had before. So for common gestures like panning, pinching, rotating, it can be much easier to use one of these UI gesture recognizers rather than implementing all of those touch methods. And we can implement these from storyboards as well. So let's say I want to implement a long press gesture on that square so that when I touch down for a certain amount of time, it gets a little bit bigger and then I can drag it around the screen. Uh, I can look for the gesture recognizers here in the storyboard and here's all the different options I can choose from. I'm going to take that long press and I'm just gonna drop it on the view that I wanna detect this gesture on. So in this case, the green view. And if I look in the side here, the gesture recognizers end up down at the bottom here because they're not actually part of the view hierarchy. And I can drag from the gesture recognizer over to the view controller, right click and drag, and I can create a new action connected to this gesture recognizer. So I'm gonna call this uh, long pressed. And that can be a little bit of a simpler way of setting this up rather than having to write these lines of code here. Uh, and now I can just detect when there's a long press gesture on that square. And by default, I think it's something like two seconds that the press has to be, uh, but you can change this to be any value you want. Maybe it's one second, anyway. So if I push down for a certain amount of time, we get long press. Uh, but I'm gonna push down here and we can see long press appears, and then I let go, and we get long press again. And this is because the action is executed uh, not only when the gesture is started, but when the gesture also ends. So we can change this to be the gesture that we're dealing with, which is the long press gesture. So I can check if the gestures state equals began, then I'll just print out long press, if the sender's state equals ended, then I'll print uh, ended. And now if I push, I get long press, and if I let go, I get ended. So really easy to detect the start and end of this. If I'm beginning my long press, I want the square to get bigger, and if I'm ending it, I want it to shrink down to its normal size again. Uh, and I could calculate a frame and expand the frame of the view and then take it back to its original frame, but for something like this, it's probably easier to just use a transform. If it begins, I'm going to set the green views transform to be a CG affine transform scaled by uh, maybe 1.25. So it'll be 1.25 times bigger than it originally was. Uh, and then when we end the view, I can just set this back to be the identity transform, which just sets it back to its original size. So long press gets bigger and then we let go, get smaller again. Yeah, there we go, bigger and then smaller. So I can long press to make this bigger and when I let go, it gets smaller. And I can also drag this around the screen but if I try and long press to make it bigger and then drag, that no longer works because when we're using UI gesture recognizers, by default, only one will work on a view at a single time. And to change this behavior, we need to set the delegates of the gestures and conform to a protocol. And I'm gonna cover the delegate design pattern in another video. So for now, I'm just gonna show you the code. 
So I'm going to set the pan gestures delegate to be the view controller. And I'm going to set the long press gestures delegate to be the view controller. And that just means that the view controller needs to conform to the UI gesture recognizer delegate and then implement a method called should recognize simultaneously with other gesture. And then all I have to do is return true here. So this, if I return true, will allow gestures to be recognized with each other. And again, I'll follow the delegate design pattern in another video, but for now, this is all we need to add to get both gestures working together. And that's it, that's my square. So if you wanna track user touches in your applications, you can use those touch methods or you can use UI gesture recognizer objects. And what you use depends on the application you're building. You can do a ton of really cool things with this. So play around with it, make some cool things and stay tuned for more videos on iOS.